video number four on this Prius Prime. Potential problem for many shops who don't know what they're doing. Uh, as you see, I had to go back to the other three videos and see why I have a heat gun set up here under a Prius with an accumulator. Now, we all kind of know Priuses don't have accumulator, but why does this Prius have an accumulator? Because it's a Prius Prime. And you will lock up and freeze up a lot of refrigerant when doing recoveries in these modes. And there's many different scenarios that could cause potential problems. I explained in previous videos. As you can see, this one's getting a line replaced from a little hit here. Normally, you can never see this because it's buried behind a bumper, a fender, and a fender cover. You may hear someone who's extremely ignorant, who's been in this field for 20, 30, 40 years, and they might have a high position and they used to do air conditioning hands on all the time, tell you, oh, when it's cold and you're in a cold shop, if you have prolonged times, you just get a heat gun and heat your uh, accumulator or your receiver dryer. Well, in this case, this is super deeply buried under there and it's not the only thing that holds refrigerant. Also, these lines got all cold because they accumulate liquid refrigerant on the bottom and this would be buried behind it. This gets cold. The whole compressor got all nice and icy cold at the bottom. Uh, this bottom line right here got cold. The whole bottom area of the subcooling part in the last like five or six rows of the condenser got icy cold because there's liquid refrigerant stored in there. Your evaporator gets cold. This is in a cold shop on a cold day with no heat. And if you hear some one who's a salesman, they're usually salesmen, maybe they used to work on cars years ago, but they haven't in years, or they hang around people, they might be in a, they're usually salesmen or marketing telling you, oh, just go around with a heat gun. How the hell are you going to get a heat gun down here without taking it apart and all those other problems? All these new cars, when you hear these guys tell you to quicken up your recoveries, you're on a vehicle, you can't start. Especially if you have dual air conditioning, you have another evaporator in a back quarter panel on a van or a SUV. It's stuck, it's its case in here. You have low refrigerant lines at the bottom that are filled with oil and refrigerant inside of them. You're not gonna send a couple technicians around with heat guns going on around trying to save your time. You charge for it. If you're working for an insurance company and you're a body shop, you charge for it. Car recovery. Especially if it's YF and you have dual AC, expect two hours plus. You charge for it. You're gonna spend five to eight thousand dollars on a good machine and more for the accessories to go in. And it's a mechanical procedure. Your body shop and you're charging. It's a mechanical procedure. I'm gonna take some numbers out of my local area because I'm not in Illinois or Tennessee or North Dakota or maybe some area where living wages in a city rates are really low, like say $60 or $90 an hour for mechanical labor rate, and maybe uh, $38 or $58 an hour for body shop labor rate. No, we're in the San Francisco Bay Area, and you're $160 to $260 mechanical labor rate, and you're floating somewhere around $110 to $150 body shop labor rate. Uh, but you're also you also have a piece of property that you're on that's anywhere from one million to three million plus, with that kind of overhead and rent to take care of in this uh, San Francisco Bay Area. So if you're a shop and you're doing recoveries, you charge for it to ensure at mechanical labor rate. If you don't got, have the guys and the equipment trained to do it, just don't do it. Otherwise, I will be seeing your burnt up compressor in another mechanical shop. And when I do the diagnosis and find all the problems on it, you will be paying for that customer's burnt out compressor and flush in the system. And on this kind of vehicle here, you will be seeing a three to $4,000 bill for one little tiny oversight because of unqualified people with unqualified equipment working on it and taking advice from say somebody from marketing on sales on how to do proper recoveries and recharges and speed it up who you'll see saying this kind of stuff where you just go around with a, a heat gun and go heat everything up. They'll always be connected to sales and marketing and they'll have a white shirt on uh, or some clean shirt on and they'll be in a stature of marketing or sales or somehow 
through the grapevine, they're connected with money in advertising or connected with sales of products or equipment. And they're the ones who will give you that old school information of going around. Yeah, 1974 pickup. I could stand in the engine bay and hit every air, uh, every air conditioning problem with the heat gun really good. 50s, 60s cars, no problem. Some early 70s cars, as you got the emission controls with all the vacuum lines in the 70s, you started burying components. By the 90s and 2000s, forget it. You can't get to these components. So if you're listening to a training class or a program or information from a magazine and they tell you to speed up your precision, uh, speed up your recovery, go around with the heat gun, are you going to take all this apart just to heat up all these components? No, that's unreal. That's not going to happen. And this is some of the information that's being given by individuals out there to speed up your system. This is a real world. It's winter times. There's collisions. You can't start cars and you got to do recoveries, charge for it. Uh, right now, I'm finished. I had to redo this three times to finally get the refrigerant out of here. And let's see what I'm pulled down to right now. I know I'm down into the microns all the way down into like, yeah, there we go. Going into the 700 micron range uh, for the fourth time. And uh, every time I reheated it up, it always brought it up positive 10, 20, 30 PSI because of the amount of refrigerant that was trapped inside the system. Now I'm gonna use nitrogen to feed and uh, bleed into the system to make it a positive pressure. So when the technician opens any of the lines, it's dry nitrogen coming out. It's not uh, moist, oxygen-bearing, atmospheric air being sucked into a vacuum, flashing off to a liquid, and completely saturating all the oil with water, literally water droplets. As soon as you break that vacuum and the atmosphere flushes, it flashes off into water. So let's go through this procedure. Let me uh, shut off right here. These two are still open. Let me shut off my, uh, this is something I added, ball valve. Shut off my system there. Let me go in purge mode. Let me go in purge mode. That could stay going. So now I know I'm shut off here. And at the end of this line, I'm shut off right here. So this is the only uh, line I have. Bring over the nitrogen. Let me back this off. Let me open it up. So now it's open. It will be coming out of here. I'll just crack it down right here. So you see, I can do this. Now I have like 10 psi or so. No big deal. So I'll take this off here. hook it up and as you can see my gauges are smashed because I have dropped them more than one time I don't need gauges uh, you must have gauges guys especially if you don't have experience for safety you have to have working gauges there is a way around I mean you kind of see me work it so I'm gonna open it up right here so I can bleed air through there let's open that up we can now hear it. We can see actually see it moving around here. It's blowing out on this little string right there. We're positive pressure. We just bled out this line up to here. So now I'm going to close this line off. There we go. And now, make sure. Yeah, I'm yeah, open. And uh, so now I'm gonna back bleed, purge in dry nitrogen into the system. You see the vacuum? Now it's gonna go into positive pressure. Boom. That's all we need. One, two, three, four PSI. Now when the technician opens any of these screws, dry nitrogen will be coming out under a very low pressure, but moist air will not be sucked back in. And I gave them very detailed specific instructions. Every line he owes up, 
put a rubber plug inside, put a plastic plug in inside, take the hell of it. Tape it like your life depended on it because the customer's compressor depends on it. And it's not immediate damage, it's like a ticking time bomb that happens over a period of time. And so now I could shut everything down. My gauges will be filled, are filled with dry nitrogen now. And now the system is ready to be disassembled and serviced. Um, we still have these potential leaks at all these points where we see all this oil. If you remember from the last three video, there, and one there. So as I see more of these vehicles, if I keep seeing oil and keep seeing that they're like, on this one it's 200 grams low from a factory and it's only a 2018 at 200 grams low. So we're roughly eight ounces almost um, low on refrigerant. Did I get that right? Uh, one, two, three, three, six, seven, about seven ounces, close to seven ounces low on refrigerant, and it's only a 2018. And I have these possible leak points. So if you're a Prius customer, um, break out the old strong flashlight and see if you have these. If you're a technician and watching this video and Prius customers come in, Break out the flashlight, the bore scope, get down inside here and see if you could see these leak points that I have noted because you'll see it on other Priuses. Alright guys, I'll see you until we get to our next Prius Prime and I'll be back to recharge this back one back up in probably about a week or more because it's hard to get parts right now. See you guys.